Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. So um, yeah, big thank you for the response um, on the last video. I've had so many comments, it's been crazy. Um, yeah, can't really believe it to be honest. So I'm re really, really um, grateful for you guys. Um, really does mean a lot. So this is a continuation of the tax brackets, kind of like a part two, going over some more of the questions. Um, and at the end of the last video, I said that there was a slightly faster way to do the question where I asked you, can you calculate $50,000? How much tax someone would pay if they earn $50,000? Okay, so I show, if you guys haven't checked out part one, so uh, it's just called QR1, UCAT tax brackets explained in 10 minutes. So if you, I would really recommend that you go to my channel um, and uh, check out that video uh, and then come back here as this, this will make more sense. OK, so if you want, if you haven't had a chance to do it yet, see if you can figure out the answer to this. The answer, um, so you can pause it now um, and then um, I will talk about the answer. So the answer that we got was 8427.5 and I broke it down on my last video, like very specifically. Um, I broke it down exactly how you're meant to do it. But I said that there was a slightly faster way to do this question. OK, and that basically is described here. So it tells us that a person with an annual taxable income of 60,000 will pay 4990 plus 25% of what's remaining. So someone had already commented it actually in, in, in the comments of the last video. Um, so they find it out. So well done to you. But the way to do this question is basically the idea here is it's telling us that a person who earns 36,250 will pay 4990 tax. And we know that tax is like it's the same up until the same point. So if one person earns 50,000 and the other person earns 100,000, the amount of tax they pay on their first $36,250 will be the same. It's just the amounts after that which may change. Okay, so it basically means we can take this 4990. So for the this 50,000 could be split into the first 36,250 and then the remaining amount, which is the 13,750. OK, so the first 36,250 is taxed at 4,990, um, as we know here. OK, and then this amount is taxed at 25 percent. And if you uh, manage to put that into your calculator, you'll get that that equals 3,437.5. And you can add these two values together to get 8427.5. So that was kind of the faster way. It basically meant that you didn't have to calculate this bracket and this bracket and this bracket. Instead, you could kind of combine the first two brackets and just use that figure there. So you didn't even have to work it out. And then all you had to do actually work out was that last bracket, um, if that makes sense. OK, so that was just um, the kind of faster way to um, do that question, essentially. But let's move on to the next question um, and let's see how we would do this one. OK, so on to um, the next question. Then. So it says Corey has an annual taxable income of twenty five hundred per month. She wants to save enough money each month to pay her tax for a year. The minimum amount that she has to save each month is. OK, so perhaps you guys can have a try at this question. Let me know what you get. And um, yeah, we can take it from there, essentially. OK, so the first trick of this question is remember, the question talks about annual taxable income. A lot of people may sometimes see just the two thousand five hundred, say that it's in the ten percent. 10% of 2,500 is 250, so she has to save 250 so each month. That's wrong because you have to, first of all, convert it to a annual amount. It becomes 30,000. And now you can just work out the tax like normal. Okay, so using our slightly faster method, we can say that 30,000, so remember the first 8,950 is accounted for here, is 8,95 plus 15% of what we have left over, which is 30,000 minus 8950. Um, so that's 895 plus, And if I type into my calculator, I will get 3157.5. Add these, add those two values together, you get 4052.5. But that's the amount of tax I'm going to pay per year. Um, so the amount that I'll pay per month that I have to save, you just divide by 12. And you get 337.7 dot, 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 dot. And so therefore, the answer is going to be C, $338. OK, so I hope that makes sense. So you can see once again, it's important to not fall for the trick here. OK, so let's go on to the next question. And so this question should be really, really easy, considering what we've discussed so far. So once again, if you guys would like to pause, see if you can attempt this question and let me know once you're done with it. OK, so the reason why this question becomes easy is because of what we discussed about this last 
little bracket here. So it's important, this last sort of column here. So it's important to understand this column may not always appear. These two columns will always appear on every two tax uh, every tax questions, because obviously you have to know what the tax rate is, and obviously you have to know what the brackets are. But the last column is kind of like an Easter egg, and that's one of the things in QR. They often spawn Easter eggs on certain questions, which allow you to solve questions a little bit faster. And so this is one example, because here it gives you like a shortcut where it tells you the tax paid at the top of the bracket. So it tells you that the tax paid if you went this much, this much, this much, so on and so on and so on. So here, 36,250 is at the top of that bracket. So all you have to do to work out this question is 4990 49, divided by 36250. And what that will do is, if you put it into your calculator, that gives you 0.1376 dot, 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 dot. So your answer C, 13.8%, because it asks, what percentage of his taxable income does Omar pay in tax? Okay, so the point here is about spotting Easter eggs. And I know it can be hard to spot them. You're probably wondering, how do you spot them? Well, one of the very good tips I tell my students is, look at the numbers, okay? So keep one eye on the numbers. It's important to think about the numbers. So here, 36,250, can I ask yourselves, hmm, what's that number about? Okay, why have they chosen a specific number like that? If we go back to our first example, they mentioned 28,950. Okay, why did they choose that example? Because 89550 in the first bracket, 20,000 in the second bracket, it was easy to divide up. So similarly here in the 36,250, so sorry, that first example was from my first video, my last video. So here, the 36,250, why have they chosen that? Because it's at the top of the tax bracket. So it's important to ask yourself as well, like, hmm, okay, that number seems oddly specific. I see it over here. Is there any kind of resemblance? And obviously you can only really, like it's hard to spot Easter eggs if you've never really had a, tried spotting them before in practice and stuff um, because obviously in your exam you know you're kind of in like full fight or flight mo mode your adrenaline's coursing through your veins like you know you really want to get um, you want to be able to do it properly so I totally understand if you miss it but you can see just how much time it would save um, if you manage to spot it okay so let's go on to the last question then so with this question, let's have a read. So it says the values at the bottom points and top end points are going to be increased by 10%. What's going to be the change in income to the nearest dollar after tax has been deducted of a person with taxable income of 36,250? Well, once again, they're using that 36,250, so we can use it again. So under the old system, you have, if you earn 36,250, the tax you pay is 4,990. What we have to work out is what is the tax that you pay in the new system, okay? But the reason why we can't just read off from the table is this now becomes void because it says the values at the bottom and top end points of each income tax bracket are going to be increased by 10%. So this becomes 8950 times 1.1, which is 9845. And so therefore this will also become 9845. If we want to, I can increase this value by 1.1 as well, but it, but we're not really going to get a lot out of it because the maximum that our person earns is 36,250. So we, we know he'll still be within this bracket, if that kind of idea makes sense. Okay, so now we just have to do it kind of manually this time though, so we can't really use any shortcuts. So 36,250, and we divide it into the first 9845, which is taxed at 10%. So that's 984.5. And then the remaining amount, so 36250 minus 9845, which is 26,405, which is taxed at 15%. And that gives you 3960.75. So you can add up both of these values. If you add up both of these values, you get 4945.25. And so technically what we've done now is we've calculated the uh, tax, the old and new tax. And the question asks about what's the change in income. But, uh, sorry, what's the change in income after tax has been deducted? But of course, the initial income is the same in both. And what dictates the final income is just the change in, is just how much tax there is. So you can simply just compare between these two. You can see there's a $45 difference in the tax. So therefore C has to be the answer. So with the new one, you earn 45, so you pay 45 less dollars tax. So overall, you're going to earn $45 more because less $45 less is going to go to tax. Okay, so that was the way to do this question. So you can see there's a couple of um, kind of couple of ideas here. And it's difficult to do if you didn't really understand the idea of the uh, changing the values at the bottom and top end points. The point that I want to illustrate here is actually you can do this question even faster. But it takes a lot a bit of thinking. Okay, so 
if you think about what's happened here, when we change these values to 9845, what actually happened? So the only difference, so because so, the question is asking about what's the change in income. So in order to calculate the change in income, remember, we're trying to work out the change in tax. The, on, the only thing that happened in terms of change in tax is that there was an additional 10% of our income is taxed at 10%. So we had an, another 10%, which was 895, was taxed at 10%. Okay. And as a result, we lost 10%, which was the, nine, the 895 which was taxed at 15%. So we lost an, like another $895 that was taxed at 15%. So basically we gained another $895 into the first tax bracket and we lost $895 from the second tax bracket. So if you guys simplify this, it becomes minus 0 0.1 minus 0 point, uh, sorry, 0 0.1 minus 0 0.15, which is 895, lots of negative 0 0.05, which if you put into your calculators, 895 times 0 0.05 is actually 44.75, negative 44.75. So what was the difference? We pay 44.75 less dollars in tax, which is exactly the same as the difference you see here. So the answer is C. So this is two lines of work. Once again, you can see there are ways to answer questions, okay, by kind of like bypassing little things here and there. Um, and I want you guys to watch out for my next upcoming, one of my next upcoming videos on QR, um, which uh, has been highly requested. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, take you through a load of questions, which can be done much, much faster. Okay, this is really, really important. So this is one of the ideas you can see this question, obviously, it's manageable, but a lot to do. And to be honest, like, it's really hard to think about doing something like this this way. But that's one of the kind of like mentalities you kind of need to be getting in, if possible, for QR. It just allows you to do questions way, way faster. Okay. So I appreciate that, that was difficult. Please let me know if it didn't make sense. But all that's happening is here is essentially like all of the other taxes are saying the same, right? We still got the first 8950 is still being taxed at 10%. But in the case of the new tax system, we have another $895, which is being pushed into the 10%, which is why it now goes from zero to 9845. And as a result, that 895 has been lost from the 15% which is the maths that's happening here. Okay, so thank you very much for watching as always. Um, I hope that video was informative. I hope it made sense. Um, and uh, as always, please do continue to like, subscribe um, and share my content around with your friends. Um, because, you know, like I said, it really does help me to be able to produce better content um, and um, as help as many people as I possibly can. Okay, so thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.